Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Look at verse 24. Verse 24. Abba, I will also that those you have given me will be with me for where I am, that they may see my tiferet that you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. So Yeshua says, I will come and I will what? Love them and I will make our abode. I don't want you to miss this. Go back because we missed it. That's my fault. Turn your neighbor and say it's his fault. Go back to Yochanan 1423 and I'm going to do my fault. Yochanan 1423. That was a footfall. Yochanan 1423. Yeshua answered and said to them, If a man loves me, he will guard my words, and my Abba will love him. Notice. And we will come to him, notice, and visit him in a motel six. Is that what it says? If you obey Sukkot and you obey the Torah and you obey the words of Yahweh, he says, when me and the Father come, we will stay with you forever and forever. We will abide with you. We will tabernacle with you forever. Why did Yeshua come? To die for our sins? Yes. But to show us how great the Father's love for us, that he would not just die for us, but through the Ruach HaKodesh, stay with us forever. That all these booze are a, a pronouncement to the world that our Savior tabernacles and sukkahs with us forever, just like he tabernacled and sukkahed with the Father before the world was. Does any of this make sense? Baruch Hashem. They're painting the complex today. I hear they're painting the complex. Just wait what a testimony they're going to receive when we go out there and say the bracha with the lulav and the etrog. We're saying yeah, the, the, the glory of Yeshua was made flesh and is dwelling among us every day of our lives. And the Father said in Yohanan 14, 23, that their hangout with us will be forever because we hang out with him forever. Tadarabaya. The Father has demonstrated his love for us as individuals. That both, and only this, that both the Father and his Son, both, have made a permanent dwelling in our tabernacles. When nothing's changed. When did we build Sukkot in the wilderness? When Yahweh's Sukkot was established. When, listen, when do we become the Sukkot, the earthly tabernacle that houses the Ruach HaKodesh? When do we become Sukkot? When we accept the one that Yahweh built as the place of his dwelling, Yeshua HaMashiach. We do not become Yahweh's dwelling place or his Sukkot until we accept the one Yahweh pitched in the person of his son Yeshua. Nothing's changed. Yahweh does not allow us to what? To manifest his glory until we find the place of his glory, the actual sukkah, Yeshua HaMashiach. What's changed? Nothing's changed. We couldn't build our sukkah in the wilderness until Yahweh's sukkah was established. Why? Exodus 25 eight. Then I may dwell with him. Yahweh, what's with you, man? Yahweh, why do you want to be this close to us? I need space. I need. Uh, you ever try to take a vacation from Yahweh? I have. It don't work. <laughs> Yahweh sends a 90-year-old grandmother, and she starts tailgating you, and then she cuts you off, and there's this big bumper sticker, Jesus loves you. You go to buy drugs, and it turns out the drug dealer is really a born-again believer, and he starts preaching the gospel to you. There are no drugs there in that parking lot. The sheriff of heaven knows how to, how, to, how to hunt you down. The sheriff of heaven knows how to track you down. And so when we accept his sukkah, the Mashiach Yeshua, he makes our bodies temples, we'll talk about that in a second, of the Ruach HaKodesh. Can we just declare our bodies to be temples of the Ruach HaKodesh? I wake up one morning. I want to be a I want to be the sukkah of Yahweh. I want to make my body a sukkah of Yahweh. Yahweh says, "No, 
Did you enter into my sukkah? Did you enter into Yeshua? Because if you entered into Yeshua, you will be in him. And then, when, then, when, 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 then, when, then, he'll be in you. But first, you've got to be in him. Amen. Nothing's changed. Yahweh's never changed. Yes, thank you. That's an affirmation. I have the mouths of babes and suckers. Okay, we pray. The scroll of Ibrahim, Hebrews chapter 8, teaches us, listen, that our great high priest Yeshua was a minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle which Yahweh pitched, not man. Go there, go there, go there and stop looking at the watch. Ibrahim chapter 8, verse 2. You notice I don't wear a watch on Shabbat? There's a reason for that. <laughs> well, Rabbi, they just won't sit still for those long services. Oh, yes, they will. Oh, yes, they will. If they love Yahweh, they will. They don't seem to have a problem sitting for the, for the documentaries on TV or the Titanic. That's discipline. That's buffeting your flesh. Bring it into submission so you can receive the better manner. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 2. Amen. Yeshua was the attendant, don't miss this, or the superintendent of the Kadosh play and of the Ameth Sukkah, which Yahweh pitched and not man. Not only is Yeshua the Sukkah of Yahweh, made flesh, housing the Shekhinah, he also is the superintendent and chief, chief overseer of Yahweh the Father's house in heaven. Who looks after Yahweh's house, his sukkah in heaven? Yeshua. And when we go into that sukkah, we are saying, Yahweh, I want you, you want to dwell with me all the days of my life, and you will watch my earthly tabernacle just like you watch and attend to the Father's tabernacle in heaven. Am I boring you? Do you get this? When we attend to Yeshua's tabernacle, we are being like him as he attends to the Father's tabernacle. Is that what it says? Not only is Yeshua the Word, the tabernacle among us, Sukkah among us. He is the guardian or metatron, the overseer or the guardian of the Sukkah in heaven where the Father lives. The Father lives in the Sukkah. Why well, should I go into, I don't want this Jewish stuff. Fine, we'll pass you on and Yahweh will find someone who voluntarily wants to enter the things of Yahweh. Freely, free will enter the things of Yahweh. Amen. If the Father lives in a sukkah and Yeshua is the superintendent of the heavenly sukkah, then we ought to be the superintendents of a little booth on earth to show the understanding that the Father lives in a sukkah. And he said, you know something? When Israel was in the wilderness all those years, 40 years, you know that? He says, they didn't have shade, I was their shade. They didn't have food, I was their manna. They didn't have heat at night, I was their heat. I was a fire, I was a fire at night and a cloud by day. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Amen. And he says, if you enter my sukkah, I will attend to your sukkah, your body, even as I attend to the Father's sukkah right now in the heavenly place. So it's not only is Yeshua Kohen Hagadol in heaven, he's also the overseer of the Father's sukkah. In other words, brothers and sisters, the Father's heavenly temple is a sukkah. How can you be a believer and not enter into the sukkah? Could you explain that to me? Because our Father lives permanently in a sukkah. To us it's temporary because we are subject to the elements of this world. He, his sukkah, is not subject to the elements of this world. He is above the heaven. Baruch Hashem. He said, build me a sukkah, because the same way Yeshua is in my sukkah in heaven as the great Kohen Hagadol and the high priest of our profession, I, I want you to allow me to dwell in your midst 
and I will invite you into my sukkah, and then you could build your sukkah as a manifestation of my sukkah. Is this, is this too complicated? Baruch Hashem. Yahweh. Yahweh. It is true our Mashiach's death brought the reality of salvation and the forgiveness of our sin. However, the acceptance of Yeshua is a, a sign of a relationship that needs to germinate into or to, to develop into a dwelling of Yahweh in the inner man. Does any of this make sense? Salvation by the blood, proclaiming the blood of Yeshua for salvation is the seed, the beginning of a relationship with Yahweh. But it is when we become the sukkah of Yahweh, our body is a what? A temple of the Ruach HaKodesh that we are manifest and we are sons of Yahweh. B'nai Yahweh. So you can't be a born again Christian walking around claiming that 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 we that Yahshua tabernacle is with us and not be willing once a year for seven days to go into the sukkah to show that obedience is better than sacrifice. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Yahweh. Is anybody enjoying? Stay in Ibrahim 8.10. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Master Yahweh. I will put my Torah in their mind. I will write it on their levi in their hearts. I will be their aloha, and they shall be my people. I'll put it in their hearts. Put what in their hearts? Ted, the Ruach HaKodesh. I'll turn them from believers into tabernacles, into Sukkot. I am in the process of taking children of Yahweh and making them into Sukkot of Yahweh. The Ruach HaKodesh dwells within us. Blessed be the Holy One. He, he dwell, indwells each of us as we become Yeshua's Sukkah. To me, when I go into that Sukkah, on, Yom, on Chag Sukkot, I declare to the world that I am Yahweh's Sukkah. That's a declaration of who I am. B'nai Elohim, B'nai Yeshua, B'nai Yahweh, a child of Yahweh, a dwelling place of the Most High, El Elohim. When I go into the Sukkah, it is an outward manifestation of an inward reality. Talk to me, somebody. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Turn with me, please, to Corinthia Aleph, 1551. You get more word at B'nai Yeshua than you do for 10 years in that old little nation you used to go to. Denomination, little nation. You get the meat of the word, even though it's basic. Sukkot 101. Corinthia Ale. Corinthia Ale. 1551. Here we go. But see, as we acknowledge that we are the sukkahs of Yahweh, there's something even more permanent. 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Be shown, I, I show you a sukkot mystery, a sword mystery. We will not all die, but we, all, we shall all be changed. Not everybody in this room is going to die, or, or not everybody's going to die, but some people will be alive when Yeshua returns. Amen? Amen. Not everybody's going to die. There will be some people who will remain alive when Yeshua returns. Amen? Amen. But in, in a, we, will, we will all be changed in a moment in the... So what do you mean change? Look at me. What, what do you mean change? Your preacher, you already told me I am the Sukkah of Yahweh now. What do I need to be changed? You already told me I am the Sukkah now. Why do I need to be changed? If I house Yahweh Shekhinah now, why do I need to be changed? I'll answer your question. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last shofar, the shofar shall sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, Yom Tidwah, we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on what? 
immortality then, when then this corruptible will have put on incorruption, and this mortal will have put on immortality. You don't have immortality. There's nothing immortal about your soul. It's a lie. There is nothing immortal about your soul. That is a, a religious lie. You get to be immortal if you trust Yeshua, and if you're obedient to Yeshua, and if you endure to the end, and if you run the race set before you, you get the gift of being clothed with immortality. Because if you had an immortal soul, you wouldn't need to receive immortality when Yeshua returns. Baruch Hashem. So when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then, when, then, shall be brought to pass the saying that death or my current temporal sukkah will be swallowed up in the victory of a immortal sukkah. Tell somebody. So if you keep Sukkot now and you're obedient now and you allow Yeshua, to, you allow your body to be the Sukkah of Yahweh now, he says, I will reward you with a permanent Sukkah because you did well to allow me to dwell in your temporal Sukkah. We don't go from synagogue to church, Israel to Gentile backgrounds. We go from glory to glory, even Amen. by his Ruach, says Yahweh. We go from the temporal sukkah to the eternal sukkah, not pitched with man's hand. This is not in my notes, but it is in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 5.1. I'm just obeying the Ruach. 2 Corinthians 5.1. I hope it's the right scripture. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Is anyone enjoying? All right, forget it. How about that side of the room? Is anyone enjoying, Robbie? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Toda Rabba Yahweh. I said second and I went to first. My goodness. Don't miss this now. Are you ready to shout? Yes. Even you guys in the front row. Are you ready to shout? Yes. If we allow ourselves to be his sukkah, he will give us an eternal sukkah and remove our temporal sukkah. So we're going from sukkah to sukkah. The eternality of this day, he always says, you will dwell in sukkah, you will dwell in booze for what? Ever. Meaning, you will dwell in booze forever, seven days a year, but I will dwell in your booth forever. And when I get rid of this, this booth, I'll give you a permanent one. And I'll take care of that permanent one forever, just like I take care of the Father's sukkah as his attendant. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I will attend to your eternal sukkah, just like I attend to my Father's sukkah, if you allow me to work in your life through obedience. Do you have to do this? No, you don't. It's all on a free will basis. That's the great thing. It's all on a free will basis. Baruch Hashem. Second Corinthians 5.1. For we know. Do we? Do we? We're supposed to. Second Corinthians 5.1. For we know that if our earthly sukkah, that is the sukkah of this flesh and blood, be destroyed here. Destroyed. We still have a building or a sukkah of Eloha, a bait or sukkah, not made with hands, eternal in the Shamaim. Meaning, listen, even though we die before Yeshua returns, should we die and should Yeshua tarry? And the sukkah of this body is destroyed. Don't worry, we have reservations in the sukkah of the Father where Yeshua is the chief superintendent. Shout somebody! If, if our earthly sukkah is destroyed, 
even though Yeshua lives in it, he, Yeshua can't die because Yeshua lives in us, right? Hey. Doesn't Yeshua lives in us? So the, the, our earthly Sukkot can be destroyed, but Yeshua will move us up and move it on up Amen. to the north side. So be Lux's apartment in the sky. True? We're not going down, we're going up. And we're going from glory to glory. We go from this earthly sukkah to the father's sukkah, which we see here, it says, there is a bayit or a sukkah or a dwelling place not made with office depot and builder square material. Office Depot didn't touch this sukkah. It's the Father's house. You believe in Yahweh? Yes. Believe also in me. Yes. For my Father's house, sukkah, are many abiding places. Yes. Notice, abiding places. In that big sukkah, there are many little sukkah. See, we're stuck with a small sukkah based on our property and based on our space limitations. But that sukkah in the sky, in, if you believe in Yahweh, let not your heart be troubled. Yes, believe in Eloha, believe also in me. In my Father's sukkah are many abiding places. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place so that where my sukkah is, that's where your sukkah is going to be. 